Hey everybody, today I'm reviewing my Blundstone 550 boots. Uh, I've had them for years and years now and they're still going strong and I don't plan on replacing them anytime soon. Let me just start out by saying the year I got these, I wore them every single day. They were my, they were my everyday shoe. On stage, going camping, at the mattress store, everywhere I went, these were the shoes. I'm gonna look back through my Amazon account and see exactly how long I've had these Blundstone boots. July 1st, 2014, I ordered a pair in size 10, and the next day I sent them back for a nine and a half. So in the US, I wear a 10 and a half, so I guess in Australian size, I wear a nine and a half. The 10 probably would have been fine, uh, but I wanted something that hugged my foot a little bit more, so I ended up with a nine and a half. So I've had them for about two and a half years. So they started out like this, and now they look like this. So I'll, I'll address a few of the things I see on Amazon reviews. I've had these for going on three years and they've never leaked water and I've stepped in many puddles. I don't do manual labor for a living where I'm like walking in the mud or the water or anything like that. I am not scared to step in a puddle with these things. I've never had any kind of moisture leak in. There are people on Amazon that have had them for a long time and say that eventually they will leak water around the toe. Um, but for me, I have never had a problem with that. People are also pointing out that the polyurethane that they used to use in the soles that would crumble has all been completely replaced. Most likely, if you read the reviews of these, you'll see that people had the soles crumble, but realistically, you probably don't need to worry about that anymore. I have not had any issues. You can actually see, here's an interesting one. These lines right here are from where I rested my feet against a campfire ring when we were camping uh, two years ago. I've worn them in the snow. I've worn them in the water. I've worn them when it was dry. They came with two insoles. I wear them with the thinnest insole. If you were going to add an insole or an orthotic or anything like that to these, you would definitely want to order one size up. With the thinnest insert that these come with, they're still pretty tight around the top of the foot. The arch support is pretty far back, but it's not bad. It's The, the arch support's decent in these. If you compare them to something like a Converse All-Star that has no arch support, it's fantastic. Obviously, if you have like a specialty need, then you can add an insole just by a size up. All in all, the arch support's pretty good. It's not like a cowboy boot where you feel the heel and then the bump down. Uh, it's a lot more comfortable than that. Some people do mention that it's a pretty narrow boot, and I can see if you have really wide feet, you might wanna look elsewhere. My feet are right on the edge of average to wide, and I have no issues. You can see right here where my foot has kind of hung over the sole, but it's never been an issue, it's never been a comfort issue for me. So these are the 550s, and they have the soft leather sewn in. I've never worn the 500s, but from what I understand, the 500s have a little bit more room inside because they don't have the soft leather sewn in. A few guys on Amazon have commented about how they also own Red Wing and other high-end boots, said the Blundstones were great because you just put them on and go and they break in easy. And that's true, I mean, the first week I wore these, they were pretty stiff, but they broke in fast. It only took a few weeks for them to really feel like my boots. And after a month and even a year, they feel like an extension of you. When you put them on, it's like, oh yeah, it's my boots. So basically all the positive reviews just say, best boots ever, been wearing them for years. Everyone should own them. This guy says, it took nine years for my first pair to wear out. So I bought the exact same style again, and I must say that the fit, comfort, and overall quality is much improved. So there's reviews like that right there on Amazon. So generally the one to three star reviews are size issues. So if you order these and get them in the wrong size, by all means, send them back. Send them right on back and get the right size. There's no reason, there's no reason for a shoe like this that you can get in any size easily that you shouldn't just mail it on back and get the right ones. It's so easy to send something back on the internet these days. Like the, the FedEx or UPS guy just shows up and it's like, hey, I'm here for that package. You don't have to do anything except for put it back in the box and put some tape on it. By the way, the nickname for Blundstone boots is Blunnies. And I'm not from Australia, obviously, and I don't really know, but if you read the internet, there's a lot of lore about these being like a standard in Australia. Maybe Chris from Australia can comment on this and, and let us know. Another thing I'd like to point out right now, um, it does say Tasmania, Australia on there, but realistically the tag on the inside says made in Vietnam. There were a lot of complaints on the internet that weren't necessarily about the quality of the shoe, but people just complaining that they had sent the manufacturing to Vietnam instead of Tasmania. I feel that, but as an American where a lot of the stuff we get is made in China or India or Vietnam, um, I'd say the quality of these is just as high as a lot of stuff that I own that's made in the USA or made in, made in Europe. So I wouldn't say the fact that these are made in Vietnam takes anything away, but perhaps they should change the Tasmania Australia label. So I wore these all over Colorado for our 2015 trip and um, they were great for walking on the trail. They were great for walking down Main Street in whatever town we were in. 
Um, but when I sat around a campfire in the cold, my feet would get cold. The leather that wasn't facing the campfire would get cold. They're not the best boots for keeping your feet warm in cold weather. The leather gets cold and then your feet get cold because there's not any upper insulation in there. So literally what I found myself doing was taking these off and holding my socks by the, like holding my feet by the fire in my socks and then putting these back on to hold that warmth in for a little bit. But then the cold boot would cool my feet back off. If you have to walk in the snow all the time, then obviously you're gonna need a different boot. But for mild climates, these things are absolutely fantastic. Of course, now looking at the Amazon reviews, there's plenty of people that have them that live in cold climates and say that they're too warm because they're not breathable. I'm not sure. For me, they were great, um, except for the nights when it was really cold and we were hanging out outside and I was just sitting around. That was the only time I felt like these things weren't keeping my feet perfectly warm. But yeah, they're not like a standard boot in America and supposedly they are in Australia, but I don't really know. Um, since I've owned them, I've noticed characters on TV wearing them. Um, I think the guys on Criminal Minds were wearing them. I'm, I'm not sure anymore, but I have seen them on TV shows. So that's, that's always interesting when you own a shoe and then you see the guys on TV wearing it. On the 550, the leather is fully dyed, while on the 500s, only the outside is dyed. Um, and I guess that's why as these wear, they don't show any really light spots. In the 550 series, there's a few different color combinations between the leather color and the cloth color. I'd really like it if I could get a custom pair where this was like a crazy color. That'd be awesome. One of the things that makes a pair of Blundstones cool is knowing how they wore down. Like this scratch right here, I totally did on a set of bed rails at the mattress store trying to pick it up with my foot. So, I mean, when you have some Blundstones, you know also these scratches on the back, that's where I turned the wheel lock on or off on the dolly that we use for music equipment. So your Blundstones are like a historic record of the things you've done with your feet. I remember when I got these in the mail, my first impression was, whoa, those are really brown. When you first receive them in the mail, the whole boot looks like this color up here, uh, and it takes a while for them to fade out. So when I first got them, they were like, they were kind of a weird dark brown for my style. It took a while for them to really get beat up like this, like maybe a year. I just wore them and wore them and you know, they became like an extension of me. Anyway, there's not much to say. If, if you don't already have a pair of Blundstones, you should have one. Um, they're pretty inexpensive by Chelsea boot standards and they hold up great. So give me a thumbs up for these awesome Blundstone boots. And if you don't already subscribe to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. I make new videos every day and I do reviews probably about once a week. And leave me some comments because if you've owned these shoes before, I would like to know what you think. That'll help anybody that watches this video. And if you don't own these and you just have some questions, just drop them in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Bird Snake and this has been my review of Blundstone 550s. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Today I'm doing a review. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Hi there. Hey everybody. Today Blundstone 550 boots. Hi everyone. Hi everyone.